are back on the Chef server. So we know our host name is all set. We can just quickly, whoops, we can just quickly do a host name again. It's a fully qualified domain name. That's what we need to have on the Chef server. So we need to go and get the Chef server uh, repo. So let's go to Goggle and let's grab Chef. So if I go to um, chef.io, there's many ways of doing this. I, I keep bothering the poor old um, um, chef salespeople. I'm sure they run analytics and, on this stuff. Um, every time you download this, they're going to ask me now again for my email, etc. But hey ho, this is how you would do it. Uh, another way of doing it, of course, is download it the once, put it on a local folder, uh, keep that repo available, and then mount it as a shared. Uh, folder within VirtualBox. I'm not going to do it that way this time. I'm going to show you as if you were just doing this within software. Um, so to do that, we're going to have on-premise chef. Install my own. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that. It is going to be Red Hat. You can go for the Ubuntu one as well. And it's going to be Red Hat version 6 because this is CentOS 6. You see now there's a 7 out as well. Um, but we're going for six. So we're going to download that. First name, this is what I meant. Um, I must be driving their analytics crazy because uh, in the lead up to this, you can imagine I was downloading this a few times. Um, another build. I agree and download. And that should kick off a download here now in a minute. There we go. And we want to keep it. Perfect. So 431 meg later, it's coming in over the 192 um, bridged adapter. I'm on a fairly quick link, as you can see, but it's still going to take some time. So join me in a minute when this is all down on the machine. All downloaded. There it is. It's all fully there. So let's just go and grab that. Whoops. I didn't want to slim that down. I wanted to... Uh, I'm going to slim this down. Um, let's now go over to, um, where am I here? I'm in slash root. So I'm going to move uh, home e Killian uh, downloads chef to here. So our repo is in here. We're ready now. We're ready now to finally install our chef server. So let's get going on this. First thing we want to do is we want to rpm minus uvh dot slash chef. Let's install the package. So that's going to take a couple of minutes. It's going to run through this. It gives us a nice uh, progress bar. So we can see it's hammering through that. Once that's finished, we're going to then run the chef server dash ctl reconfigure command. And that will take some time because um, it's installing the entire Chef server capability on this machine. But the actual package itself takes no time. Here it is. Almost there. There we go. Lovely. So now we want to run chef server ctl reconfigure. As I said, that's the command, and that will put the chef server on our machine here. Off it goes. This command is going to take quite a while to run, takes in or around six to eight minutes usually. This is a bit that takes ages and ages. It sits here for quite some time. Um, so what I'm going to do, rather than just have you watching a screen that's just going to sit there, um, I'm actually just going to pause the video and then I'll pick up the minute this gets going again. There it is. It's all back. It's literally just finished. That took 211 seconds. Uh, I think it took a tad longer than that, but we'll go with the belief in the 211. Um, what I want to do now is just check 
that that's actually installed. So this also takes a little bit of time, but I'm, I'm actually going to let this run through. So CTL and test. You can run a test against this. So let's run that. What we want to see is pedant in nice big letters and that lets us know that everything's running quite correctly. There it is. This will now generate all sorts of keys and that's what takes a little bit, little bit of time. Not a huge amount of time, about a minute, maybe two. Once that's done, we need to install the Ops Code Manage, which is the website, which will give us our web GUI in order to manage this from now on, which would be a much easier way to manage our Chef server. Not seeing any major errors, that's fine. Lots of things saying you haven't got an environment, uh, sorry, an organization or a user, and that's fine. We haven't created those yet. Yeah, no users. Lovely. Perfect. That's what we want to see. No major errors, no issues at all. So just to be sure with my SE Linux setup on this machine, I'm going to... Um, Set the enforce policy as permissive. I should have possibly done that earlier, but that all looks good to me. So we now want to install, so we do a chef server CTL install the ops code manage. That's what we want to do because we want to have a web GUI on this system. Again, that's going off. It's going to grab the packages, so it will take a little bit of time to run through this, about two minutes again. It is still running, believe me. Still, as they say, all good things come to those who wait. And within a couple of minutes, it should just say, yeah, all done. These are always nervous moments when you're making a video, thinking, will it work? Will it come back to me? Will it actually be fully installed or will there be an error? And if there's an error, there's an error. Then we'll just have to fix it. But it, this should be fine. Wow, okay, I didn't appreciate it was going to take this long. My apologies for this, but it will be there in a minute. So what are we going to do afterwards? Well, afterwards, we've got to tell the chef server, ah, finally, we're going to tell the chef server that we've installed the Ops Code Manage. How do we do that? Well, we do a reconfigure again, just like we did a second ago, but this will run far quicker than the very first run that we did. So chef server CTL reconfigure. That will hopefully bomb through it in about 25 seconds.
Okay, 25 seconds, like I said. Um, with that done, it remains to create our users. So, chef, server, ctl, user create. We're going to create a user. And it's going to be me. For the purposes of this video. At gmail.com. Oh, I better tell it my password. I'm going to use password with a zero. There's my key. In fact, if I just make this slightly larger. We now need to say we're going to have an organization. Chef server CTL org create. So we've done the user create. Now we're doing the org create. I'm going to call it Sassify. Its full name is... Sassify Limited, and we need to associate a user. So it's minus minus association underscore user. What user? Well, there is only one user of the system, E. Killian. So that will create the organization and give us a key back as well for that. Excellent. Now, of course, we've created the users in the Chef server CCL, but we now need ops code manage to know that those, that user and organization are there. So we go ops code manage CTL reconfigure. That's going to run through its reconfiguration for the website. And then we're ready, almost ready, to log in for the first time on our Chef server. So we are really close now. What remains to do? Well, we brought this machine up clean from scratch. It's a CentOS 6.6. .6. It will have an IP tables implementation. And what I want to do is flush the current IP tables once this comes back to us. And actually add the rules to allow connections into port 443 and port 80. So this is almost there. That all looks good as well. So I'm going to do an IP tables minus F just to flush them out completely. Then we're going to go IP tables minus A, it's an input rule, minus P TCP minus M TCP minus minus d port the port i'm allowing 443 minus j what are we going to do with traffic from us accept us and we're going to do the same again on port 80. then we need to tell the service to save that and restart Okay, all looks good. So let's go and start up our internet browser again. Oh, it's already up, hang on. It's already down here. There we go. This time we're gonna to go to chef server dot sassify, sassify limited dot com. Don't worry about this. This is because it's a self-signed certificate on our open source chef here. Um, and that's absolutely fine. You expect this error. Um, you go to advanced and you go click to proceed to an unsafe site. We know it's not unsafe because we've just done the install. And there we have it. There is our chef server. For the first time we can log in into our chef server. And you can see the Chef GUI. And this is where we will manage things from now on. So if we go to policies, we can see we've got no policies. We've got no nodes. Kel surprise, we haven't done the node yet. Uh, we can go to administration and see that there is one organization, Sassify, with one member in it, Eamon. So that's the Chef server. Tick in the box for the Chef server. Let's move over to the Chef workstation now and configure our chef workstation to be where we will actually build our recipes. Join me in a second for part four.